Good afternoon everyone. I'm Dr. Sheila Campomanes Kahandi and I'm going to give you a lecture this afternoon about taking care of our mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. I was supposed to give this lecture personally um, on this date also but due to the recent unfolding of events in our locality I had to video and uh, record this video for you. So let's start. Taking care of our mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. So as early as May 2020, the WHO already recognized what had been stressed by the United Nations regarding the need to increase services for mental health. If such need will not be met, the risk of a massive increase in mental health conditions in the coming months would be very high. Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the WHO Director General, said the impact of the pandemic on people's mental health is already extremely concerning. He went on to add that mental health must be treated as a core element of our response to and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Among the issues that we encounter during this pandemic, which would greatly affect our mental health are as follows social isolation discrimination the fear of contagion the loss of family members loss of income and unemployment the cases of depression and anxiety are increasing and this is seen all over the world globally those aged 15 to 29 years old are the most vulnerable population according to the World Health Organization. Specific population or groups are at particular risk of COVID-related psychological distress. First in line would be the frontline healthcare workers who are faced with heavy workloads, life or death decisions, and the risk of infection. Other groups that are particularly at risk are the women who are juggling homeschooling working from home, and household tasks. The adults and elderly with pre-existing medical conditions are also affected. Young people with history of mental health needs are also affected. A study done in the UK revealed that 32% of young people agreed that the pandemic worsened the status or the status of their mental health needs. Let us not forget the children and the adolescents whose age group you, most of you belong to. So there are reports that revealed that parents have observed that their children had difficulties in concentrating. So these reports were in Italy and in Spain. Even stay-at-home measures could heighten the risk of witnessing or suffering violence or abuse. That is a reality. Like, for example, um, we have been seeing reports on national television wherein there is domestic violence uh, like rape or domestic abuse that is being uh, experienced by the younger ones. And all because they, of the stay-at-home measures. So, mas na-expose na noon sila to this violence and abuse. Children with disabilities, children in crowded settings, and those who live and work on the streets are also vulnerable. So let's move closer to home. Back here in the Philippines, the Department of Health also reported spikes in mental health related calls due to the COVID-19 crisis. From around 300 to 400 calls in May 2019 to February 2020, it spiked to at least 1,000 calls from April to July 2020, according to the Department of Health. This amidst the fact that the country consistently ranked top five in the Global Optimism Index. Um, kaning Global Optimism Index, ang ilang ingon ana, is that Filipinos kuno 
mo yung mga uh, positive ang kanang panglantaw sa ginabuhi, di ba? We are known nga mga jolly, but um, in spite of that, because of this pandemic, dagan ka ayon nagseek og help sa atong mga hotlines, mga mental health help hotlines, dagan na nawag nga nag nagseek sila ng help because they are somehow disturbed mentally. So mental wellness is actually all about coping and it is an individualized uh, strategy. There is a no one size fits all way to cope. So in a way, different strokes would work for different folks. Factors that would play a role in our response to stress during this pandemic are the following. First, your background. Next would be your social support from your family or friends. Financial situation would also play a role. And your health would also play a big role. Your emotional background and most of all, the community you live in. Now let's move on to healthy ways to cope with stress. So first on the line would be acceptance. That would be top of the agenda. The sooner you accept the situation, the better it is for your own good. This is an unprecedented situation. Nobody, nobody saw this coming. And a pandemic is rare. And for most of us, it is a new phenomenon. And it is beyond our control. It has been beaten in the past. Okay, dagan may mga pandemics before. But uh, so we know that it is going to end. But as of now, we are not seeing even the slightest hint of it ending. Uh, even in our place, sadly, it is just peaking. So there is an end. It is going to end, but we don't know when. But scientists, the government, all nations and sectors are working hard to combat it. So acceptance. There is a reason why acceptance comes first. I believe because it creates a domino effect. What follows this acceptance once you accept the situation we are in is that you realize that you are not the only one going through this. You are not alone. You have your family, your friends, colleagues, who are all going through this and even the whole community. Everyone is immersed in this unusual situation and faced with limited resources. What follows next is the calming effect of acceptance. I hope so. Sometimes it may take an effort to remain calm, but exert effort if you have to. COVID-19 can make us feel help helpless. So it can make us feel out of control. So we should focus on things that we could control like our body, our thoughts. And um, one, one of these ways to somehow achieve this calmness is to practice conscious deep breathing exercises to calm yourself. Next on the line would be acknowledge. Acknowledge how you feel, your fear and anxieties about the current situation. Cry if you need to once you have acknowledged your feelings. Recognize that it is okay to be not okay. So I think you're reminded of the um, recent uh, Korean novella that is topping uh, the charts right now or in Netflix. So it's okay to be not okay. It's okay to cry and it is not even a weakness to cry. It is not a sign of weakness. Next on the line would be to communicate. Now that you have acknowledged your feelings, communicate them to people whom you trust. Communication also in, involves listening to and empathizing with family and friends who also want to share their feelings to you regarding the current situation. In that way, you both unload each other of your burdens and make each other feel lighter and better. Fourth would be just be. 
do not set very high expectations for yourself or even unachievable goals. Live each day as it comes and achieve what is needed to be achieved for the day, like for example, your school assignments in your online classes. Ayaw na lang sa iyo doon na una o dinago, yun ka ron na dapat mahumanday ni mo tanan. But even if you have a lot of school school tasks to be achieve, achieved, ang inyong buwato na na, mas maayos siguro nga i-organize ninyo in batches if that could be possible. Don't be too hard on yourself. We can all use some self-compassion during this difficult time. There are two main goals to achieve during this pandemic um, as I see it. So first is to follow government health protocols and second is to protect ourselves from being infected with the virus. All the rest come secondary. But for you kids who are still in school, um, katulog yun din ng inyong koan, inyong pagskwila. Kay lisod po ka ayo o iundang na inyong pagskwila like they are proposing academic freeze lately and um, for me lisod man good na good kay the children are the future and in order to keep a country stable and to develop a country even more dito yun tamo bang sa education of our youth so tinarong yun magskwila tinarong yun magskwila the fifth would be to limit the news and be careful in choosing what you read. We all want and need to be informed and be updated with what's going on, but sometimes reading a lot of stuff about the pandemic would add up to our anxiety. Understandable raman yun na ang laganahanta mubasa, laganahanta ma-informed because that is a way wherein we can regain our self-control because this pandemic has somehow shattered the normalcy of our lives. However, we should recognize that information overload can be toxic. So give yourself a favor by taking breaks from watching, reading, or listening to new stories. Make it part of your routine, not the routine, okay? So you schedule a time of the day when you sit down to watch the news or check the news online because hearing about the pandemic repeatedly can be upsetting and mentally exhausting too. So personally, what I do is that um, if I want to get updated with the news, I just watch the evening news. And then sometimes if I check on social media, but it's the evening news that I always watch. Then, of course, avoid fake news. There's a lot of misinformation swirling around, so stay informed by sticking to reliable websites or sources such as government websites. Avoid misinformation and save yourself from further distress. Next would be to practice social media hygiene. Social media can be toxic also, so limit time spent on social media as well. It is not even recommended to check your social media accounts once you wake up in the morning. As much as possible, if makaya yun, ayaw da yun check o Facebook, no? Because they say, for example, you saw something unpleasant on Facebook that provoked you or that made you be in a bad mood sometimes it might last throughout the day so it may actually be the cause that you woke up on the wrong side of the bed so as much as possible avoid checking on your social media early during the day upon waking up kailangan mo ni ko ano erwan yusaf he also advised na mag set put ka og time one one hour during the day nga mag check ka sa imong social media account if you have social media accounts guys okay the seventh would be to connect with the outside world so we humans are social creatures by nature 
that's why this pandemic has somehow um, disturbed our equilibrium because we love to socialize but this pandemic has somehow required us to maintain some distance from our fellow human beings so we may be encouraged to practice social distancing but we have the internet to reach out to family and friends who are living far away from where we are. So, gamito na nato ang internet to connect with friends. So, we use it to check on friends, family, colleagues, and neighbors through messaging apps that are readily available. So, Messenger, WhatsApp, um, what else do you have? And then, we can also call them through phone. So checking in on them is a way of expressing our love and care for them and in spite of being physically absent, we level up the dose of communication and also in that manner we step up the dose of love and care for our loved ones even if we are not with them and therefore we offset the stress. Collaboration is still possible even if we have minimal to no social contact at all. Staying connected also adds up to spending extra quality time with loved ones. Actually, social distancing could be a misnomer and the real call is for physical distancing to achieve the end effect of social solidarity. Now let's move on to the next strategy to cope with stress. That would be to engage in healthy, enjoyable, and relaxing activities. So it could be your personal rituals of hygiene, getting adequate sleep, trying to cook healthy meals, fixing your surroundings, decluttering or organizing your stuff, and then reading a book which, have you, which you have been wanting to read. It would also be good if you have your endorphin fix daily. What are endorphins? Endorphins are our happy hormones. So at least do one thing every day that makes you happy. Um, in that way, your endorphins would um, spike, the levels would spike in your circulation. And then you might also want to revisit happy memories by looking through old pictures looking through memorabilia or stuff that could spark happy emotions for you. Now, staying indoors should not hamper physical activity. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends exercising regularly to cope with stress from the COVID-19 pandemic. So, ways to exercise would be through dancing, kanaman zumba, brisk walking around the house, walking up and down the stairs, lifting heavy objects like probably grocery bags or rearranging the furniture, you know? and then using your own body weight such as when you're doing push-ups. Next would be to meditate, like do conscious breathing exercises, feel the moment, feel the now, and then you might also want to do journaling and then also don't forget to pray of course kay wala gita kung wala ang ginoo no and then lastly you might want to list the things that you want to do once this pandemic is controlled in that way although we are not yet seeing the end of this all um, in that way you would still have something to look forward to so still hope floats right next would be to take online consultation if that would be necessary so our government have set up some hotlines that you might want to call in case you really need to find support in terms of your uh, mental health issues by the way our undersecretary dr rosario verjere um, told uh, broadcasted it in television which i so agree when she said that uh, I would say it in Bisaya nga kung matawag daw ka sa mga mental health hotlines, dili na pasabot nga buang na ka. Dili din na siya pasabot. Dili mo mo na pasabot nga kung mag-istorya ka, psychiatrist, buang na ka. 
no it's just that you want someone to talk to someone to unload what you're thinking what you're feeling and they're always there for you no kaning mga hotlines nato for mental health so we have our national center for mental health ncmh das usap so we have the contact numbers there and also the philippine mental health association also lends support to those who are facing mental issues because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, we should also know when and where to seek medical care when needed. For example, lang yun no, simbako na dahil nagyud tayo simptomas nga tungo sa kaning atong kinahang gi kahadlokan na sakit. So, in advance, maguna-una na taog asa tamo adto, mag mag ask around na ta kung asa nga mga hospital sa atong lugar ang mukiter ug anin na mga sakit no kay na na may mga hospital karon nga non covid and there are hospitals that would be designated to really care for patients who have covid-19 so dapat inform na po kaana just in case kay example lang gyud abot na no si bako Dili naman ta kaon na una og tarong. So you might want to discuss it with your family members also. Next we have to know the signs of stress. Dapat makaibalutan nga kani na stress na gyud ko ani so I need help. So you have to heed the early warning signs of stress whether physical or mental reaction. So you have to recognize how you have dealt with your previous past experiences how you have handled your thoughts during that time and your emotions and behavior around past events. So, na naman yun tayong mga pinagdadaanan sa una, no? na naman yun tayong mga kalisod or mga ipangharong na mga panghitabo sa atong kinabuhi. Try to recall how you dealt with those events in your lives. Uh, how you how you handled your thoughts, emotions, yun sa nimo pag control in mong self, no? How you how you how how was your uh, thought life or thought reaction at that time? Since we mentioned about physical reaction, you should also be aware of how your body reacts to stress. Like for example, na nakai sige na kag back pain, no? Kung imo nang na kung im, you if you are only vigilant, no? Ma, mag bantay ka sa imong lawas makabantay man gyud kang naa ni reaction sa imong lawas sa stress like sige nakag back pain or imong batang ba sakit we all have different reactions to, to stress so try to be vigilant about how your body reacts to stress so in that manner kung mabantayan nimo makabalo ka nga stress na gyud ka so you really need to unwind or you need to let off that steam or shake off that stress. So signs of stress could be increased or decreased um, activity level. So hyperactive, na po iuban dili na gana mulihok, no? And then increased irritability, dali na masapot with outbursts of anger, tapos sige na makiglalis. And then next would be feelings of denial. And then, napuyuban nga, sige lang kapuyon, overwhelmed or burned out. Some would have uh, difficulty sleeping or relaxing and others would have difficulty in concentration. Some would have frequent uh, crying. No? Sometimes siguro maski wala na irasun, or lisod lisod na yun na. And then, worrying excessively could be a sign of stress wanting to be alone most of the time so that is a sign of stress so check on your friends kay lisod pud ka ning mahadlok pud ta ana no nga sige na lang sila mag inusara or kung especially if they are living alone we have to check on them regularly and then others would try to blame other people for everything and then others would have difficulty communicating or listening and others would have difficulty giving or accepting help. Denial pa. And then others would have inability to feel pleasure 
or have fun. Dili na yun ka enjoy, maski sa mga things that they used to love doing. So that is a sign of stress. We should always remember that mental health is as important as physical health. We cannot disregard it because once it is uh, not in the pink of health, our mental well-being, everything would go into shambles also. So we should always give an effort to nurture our mental health. During this situation of the COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot change the situation anymore. And it is beyond our control. But what we can control is how we react to this situation. Exert effort, if you must, to shake off all that stress as long as it is within the bounds of community health protocols. What I, uh, one of my favorite uh, things to remember that somehow gets me through this pandemic is that if it's not okay, it is not yet over. So everything's not yet okay. So it's not yet over. Once it's okay, everything will be fine. And we have um, reached the end. So we would be ready for another trial then. But for now, we will wait for when this is going to end. But we also have to protect ourselves from being infected from the virus. We should strive to follow community health protocols that is being that are being implemented by government because that is all for our own good and then lastly we should also try our best to nurture our mental health despite these difficult times so that's it for my lecture i hope you got a lot of takeaways for this lecture and i hope um, this lecture was very helpful to all of you so thank you very much Keep yourself safe. Um, do not forget to wash your hands always with soap and water. Kung mahimo, maligo, pag abot sa balay, kung di ka nigawa sa balay. Do not forget your face masks and your face shields. Um, keep yourself safe, guys. Kay hadlok na kaayo ka ng mga panahon. So take care and always pray. Always ask help from God. So God bless us all. Bye.